And now we're going to go over here to the compost toilet. We'll try not to embarrass her too much. Right at the compost toilet. Okay, now, when we said recycling, we meant recycling. Okay, this is your standard compost toilet, non-electric. And it's heated, it keeps it warm, the sun comes right through the greenhouse, and the back of the compost toilet is painted green. And so it absorbs the radiation. Now, Paula will open it up, and you just take your little dump, and then we have two ways of doing this. When you start out, when you don't have a backlog of, of, of soil made, you'll use the, the sawdust. Now, let me see if I can hone in on that. I'll look right down here. See, that's sawdust. Okay. Now... Paula's going to, this assumes she took a dump, and she's going to cover it up. Put some, so make sure she can cover it up good. Now, what's going to happen is, these operate on a, more or less, an oxygen principle. The, it, it isn't the, the, the smell that's produced by regular anaerobic conditions. And eventually, you're going to have to, there's a little drawer in the bottom. Paul will show you where it's at. Just a, and after two or three weeks, you'll pull that out. Now, what, what are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to take, and Paul is going to move here, and we have a couple, three or four of these, uh, these planters. And you can see we've got an experiment going here with, with different kinds of material, uh, wastewater, you know, from washing your dishes we're putting in there. And we're doing inside pollination. But you can have a couple, three of these things. And as soon as you get one of them filled up, it takes about two months to get one of these things filled up. Uh, just cover it with a little more sawdust and put some plants in it. Whether you want to use flowers, tomatoes grow very well, beans grow very well. And... What will happen is the decomposition rate will increase radically. And uh, this is meant to improve the situation uh, for like in Asia and India and China where they don't have any topsoil. Uh, and you really don't need a topsoil if you had seven, eight of these things. And what will happen is you'll, you'll get two crops out of one, <laughs> one, one of these uh, planters of uh, nitrogenous fecal waste deposits. And you'll see the difference after about a month that you won't even recognize anything. But we'll run two crops through and then we'll just take what's left of it. There'll almost be nothing left of it. And you'll see this other little box right here. That right there represents about three months of nitrogenous fecal waste deposits after uh, you've run two crops of whatever, and utilize all the uh, the nutrients in it. And so, okay, okay Paul has got some of the of our kind of new soil there. It's going to be recharged. Now she's going to pour a little in her hand, and you can see it's all very very dry. Now since there's so little of this stuff left, you know, and so what we do is we just take and put a little plastic tarp out there, and it's only a gallon jug of this stuff, and we let this put it out in the sun for like you know for a day or so. And if there's any bacteria or virus like they do in South America, that's how they kill all the soil viruses and stuff. And so we just take and put it out there and it's really super dry and it's just like new sawdust. And that's basically what it is. All the, you know, all the stuff that you've, uh, all the soluble fibers you've eaten that is still in there, we're reusing it. Okay, now Paul is going to take and put the soil in uh, the compost charger. Now we've done this in cities, villages, uh, even inner city. And uh, it's, it's very, and you have no nitrogenous fecal waste deposits in the gutters, the streets, it works in every country we've been. Entirely eliminates all sanitation problems. Pretty neat, huh? The, the roughage that you've eaten, you know, whole grain stuff and non-soluble fiber, well that as a contributing factor. But now we can actually recycle and reuse everything out of here. 
And we even have experiments where we see how plants will grow with pure urea, with urine. And of course, it's sterile, and we've grown uh, tomatoes in pure urine, well, 50%. Uh, and we've taken all the notes and we've grown all kinds of plants just to see we even have an ammonium nitrate generator so we use the uh, the urea to generate a gas and it feeds the through the bottom of the plants and so there's a lot of things you can do with this okay now okay you see this tube Paul is going to move it around a little now here's the catch when you go to a a legume diet with a lot of vegetables and a lot of fruit and stuff like that, what's going to happen is you're going to start plugging up regular standard toilets wherever you go. And I've just plugged up every one that you can, every, I can't even, so I have to make sure that I have to, if I'm in town, I have to take a dump in here. Now the record stands, for years I had a record, was 18 inches by 2 inches. But I did have one that was 22 inches by an inch and a half. And so we're talking about humongoloid dumps, but I think I just broke the record about a month ago off an island in Panama. I think I was, you know, it was an inch and a half by, you know, 25, 26 inches. I'd have to calculate that, but I think that's a sure record. And so it's sort of interesting when you can look in here sometimes, and after you've taken a dump, it's sort of hard to see, but I'll see if I can hold it. That's good right there. Every now and then you'll look in there after a good hearty dump, and you'll say, hot damn! Ethel, I think we got another one. And you'll maybe find some way of measuring the little sucker, well, a big one. And, you know, say, call up the, the Boone and Crockett Club. And, you know, and she'll always say, well, I always knew you had it in you. And you will start having dumps that will be a foot, foot and a half long. But they come out real nice and soft in this shape. Okay, now we're over here back by the ambient regulator and between the, the washing machine. And you'll see, this is the electrical system. And everything, all the electricity is attached to the cement wall. There's no tubes. There's no electrical wires through any of the walls of the house. Matter of fact, there's no plumbing in any of the house. We just don't have plumbing, electrical wires, so that's a neat thing for safety. Uh, we only use two small Concordia batteries so they don't vent and we have this is really since we've been doing this for almost a whole generation we just have an old time uh, power supply box there that will take the electricity uh, it's a it's a 120 uh, three-way AC it's converted to DC uh, for the wind charger and the four solar panels and it discharges when you have too much we got always have too much with those four panels and that one silver box, well, that'll just, that's, that will dissipate the, the extra into heat and to resist an electricity. Or you can just take <clears throat> and have put a little crock pot there and all the extra electricity will go into that and while you're, whatever you're doing during the day, your, your food will be cooking just from the discharge. But we really don't use the batteries that much. We only use them as a kind of an outlet to uh, convert things to 12 volts. Uh, and so during the day we can run whatever we want and then at night time we'll shut the freezer off and we like to read so there's not a lot of uh, uh, necessity for a lot of lights but the lighting system is kind of interesting here uh, we don't have we have not the traditional type of lighting system one very slowly you'll take a look here we really don't need much light because all through the day we've got this this haze coming in, beautiful soft light. If you're a painter or an artist, well, let me tell you, this is this is really nice nice light to work in. From the south facing wall. South facing wall. It's beautiful. It's all diffused, and then throughout the house, we use these little uh, trailer bulbs. Let's see if I can find one. Here's one right there, and they use tiny, tiny, tiny little. If you ever change the light in your tailgate. And almost no amperage, a quarter of a tenth of an amp. And we'll, whenever you want to go any place, you just click one of those on. It'll light it. And then when you leave, you, undo, you just unclick it. And we've got them there. We've got them there. And so we've been going almost a whole generation now. And I don't think that we've had to replace one bulb. 
And so that's, you know, you can use these things all you want. They just don't, then we've, upstairs we've got some LEDs for reading. But one of these in the bedroom will keep that whole room lit. So it's almost eliminates the need for electricity for lighting. Okay? Okay, folks, here's a little something we forgot. Okay, we've been using this all over the world. What we'll do is, even in the tropics or in Asia, we'll take an inner tube or something and fill it up with water, and we'll use that for a chair. Well, here we got a 50-gallon 50 uh, 50 drum filled with water. Now, if it's 80, 90 degrees outside, you come in and straddle this sucker that's 70 degrees, it's like a water bed. And what it does, it just sucks all the heat right out of you. In five minutes, what you've done is you've taken all the heat out of your body without the necess necessity of trying to heat the, uh, you know, cool the whole house. And that's, if you have a heat stroke or something, that's what they do. They put the cold packs on your crotch. But ten minutes of this stuff, and man, you're cooled down. Okay? Okay, for some reason, if the breeze dies down, we had this one made especially. And this converts the sun into one huge blast furnace of cold air. You turn this sucker on, it's 12 volt, and it will, you know, create all the breeze you possibly want. It only runs on about an amp or so. Here she's going upstairs to the main bedroom. Okay. Your bedroom here, it looks like it's a, a little small, but it's pretty large. Okay. We have everything, the whole electrical system is right here uh, at our back. We've got the radios, got a little television, and we got a little fan right there. That's a little heliocentric fan. That is a blast furnace. Had that for about, I don't know, 15, 18 years. And then right above it, we have one of those little dome lights. And then Paul will point to the two LEDs we use for reading. Okay, remember that thing I told you about the, the ambient regulator and the couple tanks that are up above it? Well, there's the cement wall back there. And that stay, thing will stay warm during the winter time, like 70 degrees for, you know, weeks on end. And so you really never have to worry about the house uh, uh, cooling down. It'll only lose about it. The tanks will only lose about a degree a night. And if you get from 74, 75 down to 60, that's a long time. Now I'm going to turn right around here and you'll see these tanks. There's no water in them now. But the mor when they have water in them, the morning sun hits them. They're just PVC tanks. And uh, once they get filled up with water, uh, boy, let me tell you, morning sun, and as you can see, evening sun is now hitting on them. And those will absorb any heat that's in the room. So the room will stay you know, very moderate, but they will absorb it. But then in, in the evening time, when the sun goes down, uh, they will absorb more. And this is what we look at while we're lying in bed. You see, most of the neighbors cut all the trees down and creates a big old heat sink that creates dust and a breeding ground for ticks and chiggers. And, but we've chosen to keep all of the trees up. And so you'll see, you'll see squirrels and here's these akebias right here. So sometimes I just reach out and I grab one. Here's some right here. That you can see. Okay, you'll see underneath the bed we have these bins. Now in both the bedrooms we have them. So one will be for summer and one will be for winter. And extra storage. And extra storage. And so we basically got another attic in here and you have instant access to them. This is also serves as our dresser for the first two bins. One is a linen closet and, this, and the first one is a dresser. You will notice that this is our closet. It's entirely open and we don't have any mold or anything like that in the house, and the sun never hits it. And so we've just eliminated the concept of moldy closets, and they stay very airy through the years, and it's very nice.